Am I the asshole for telling my husband I told you so and laughing at him when we got the paternity test results? I, 27 female, have been married to my husband, 28 male, for two years and gave birth to our daughter five weeks ago. I'll try to keep this short so I don't waste your time with any irrelevant details. What happened was that our daughter came out with blonde hair and pale blue eyes, while my husband and I have brown hair and brown eyes. My husband freaked out at this and refused to listen to my explanation that sometimes babies are born with lighter hair and eyes that get darker over time. He demanded a paternity test and threatened to divorce me if I didn't comply. So I did. After my daughter and I got home from the hospital, my husband went to stay at his parents' house for the first three weeks to get some space from me while I recovered, and he told them what was happening. My mother-in-law called and informed me that if the paternity test revealed that the child wasn't his, she would do anything within her power to make sure that I was, quote, taken to the cleaners during the divorce. I had my sister to lean on and help me take care of the baby during this time. We got the results back yesterday, and my husband came home to view them with me. I was on the couch in the living room, so he sat next to me and we started to read the results. They showed that he was the father and my husband had this shocked, kind of mortified look on his face with his eyes wide as he stared at it. I couldn't help but say, I told you so, and I started laughing at the way he looked. My husband snapped out of his shock and got mad at me for laughing at him. We argued for a bit, which was mainly him yelling at me before my sister came downstairs and my husband shut up. After that, my husband went back to his parents' house to, quote, clear his head. And two to three hours later, my mother-in-law called to scold me about laughing in my husband's face because apparently it was kicking him while he was down. She also left a couple of nasty texts, essentially saying the same thing this morning. I don't think I'm an asshole, but I'd like an outsider's perspective on this. Am I the asshole for telling my husband that he has to let my dad witness his colonoscopy? My mother-in-law wants to be in the room when I give birth. She is an unpleasant and pushy woman and none of her own daughters have allowed her near them when they gave birth. My sister-in-laws are at least 12 years older than my husband and are all done having kids. I am the last chance for my mother-in-law to see the birth of a grandchild. I have zero interest in letting that judgmental old woman see me down there. She has objected to me from the beginning because I have tattoos and I am not in any way interested in being a stay-at-home wife. I have a lot of tattoos and a career I plan on continuing. And I also have tattoos down there that are none of her business. My husband is her baby boy. He is a good husband and has stood up for me against her many times. When she tried to interfere with our wedding, he put his foot down. When she tried to convince him that we should move back to his hometown where he could work from, but I would not be able to find an employer in my line of work, he said no because my career is important to me. And while we can live off of his earnings and the cost of living is lower in his hometown, our combined earnings are much better altogether. She has started crying to him that all she wants is to see a grandchild being born. All of her friends have experienced it and she wants it. He is starting to crumble under her emotional blackmail. So I made it clear that the only way I would agree was if, before the birth, my husband made arrangements for my father to witness him getting a colonoscopy. He would need a ride anyways, so two birds, one stone, you know? He said I'm being ridiculous, but I said none of my brothers would let my dad see them getting a camera shoved up there and he felt left out. He finally understood my point, but his mother is upset that I use such a stupid comparison. She says that it isn't the same thing at all. I offered to change it to me watching her get a Brazilian wax, and she hasn't called in a week. I know seeing a baby being born might be her dream, but I am not interested. Am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for not inviting my friends for an annual New Year's trip because they didn't invite me last year? So this is a throwaway because two of my said friends follow me on Reddit. Hope they don't see this. Anyways, so my friends and I have been traveling for every new year since we were 16. We are in our early 20s now. It's a friend group of six people, three girls, three guys, and naturally, we've all dated someone from the group at some point in high school. The guy I, came, the guy I used to date and me broke up in 2020 but stayed friends. He found a new girlfriend a few months after that. Let's call her Amy. But I was okay with it and we all continued to hang out. Now, New Year 2021 is coming up, and we start to plan our trip. We were supposed to, to go to Greece. Usually, I'm the one talking to the agencies and trying to save as much money as we can. Everything is fine and going well until about a month before the trip, my ex-best friend, my ex-best friend, comes over and tells me that Amy is uncomfortable with me going on the trip because everyone is coupled up and I was single, and given my history with her boyfriend, she felt awkward. I felt sorry because I never got the feeling that she didn't like me or anything, so I asked if that means she's not coming or what. Turns out 
that she still wanted to come, just didn't want me there. I was kind of hurt by this, but even more when the rest of my friends agreed that maybe it would be better if I didn't come so there would be no drama on the trip. Anyways, I didn't go, kind of stayed away from Amy and my ex since then, and stopped hanging out as much with all of them. Not long ago, Amy and my ex broke up. I don't know why. And now, this year's trip is coming up. I already had plans with my roommate, and we are going to Amsterdam. When my friends learned about this, they all just assumed they are coming with us as well. I told them that roommate and I are going alone, and if they want to go, they can plan it themselves, but that this is not a group trip. It's petty, I know, but feels like feels right to do to them what they did to me. Anyways, they called me some names and we had a fight. And I'm starting to wonder if maybe I'm in the wrong. I mean, I'm ending years long rela- years long friendships over some stupid trip. So, am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for skipping New Year's Eve at my child-free sister's? Last week, I hosted Christmas for my family. I, 33 male, have a 2-year with me and my wife every year or two year old i guess every year it's at my sister's parents or house and it rotates every year one of us hosts thanksgiving slash christmas slash new year's in the last year my sister who is locally child free got a dog i love my sister but we are very much opposite when i had my kid it changed our relationship a bit she tolerates her words my son as she has never watched him i've also never asked my son is pleasant at family functions and this annoys my sister My sister has turned into your classic dog mom. World revolves around the dog type. I do not own dogs, and I really don't want to be around them. them. I don't want them in my house. While my sister wanted to bring her dog to Christmas, I said no. It's well-trained and overall okay for her dog. I just didn't want it at my house or even my yard. She complained and left it alone, but was not happy about it and let me know that several times. The day before New Year's Eve, Eve, she told me kids aren't welcome at her house. I was taken back by this and asked why. She just said alcohol would be present, we all drink and family friends also come to this party, and just said it wouldn't be appropriate for a two-year-old to be present. My wife and I planned to only stay until 10 anyway, and then we would go home because of our kid. We reconsidered and opted not to go at all and respected my sister's wishes by uh, by keeping the kid at home. I let her know half hour before the party started. Wife and I treated it like any other night. We didn't even stay up until midnight. By 11, I noticed missed calls from her and didn't answer. Fell asleep while texts started coming in. Calling me an asshole. Calling me a dog hater. Saying it was rude I didn't come to the party. Said it was bullshit that she got my kid a Christmas present, but I didn't get her dog anything. The list went on. So she clearly was drunk. I tried to call her. She didn't answer and got a text. I'm not answering, asshole. So am I the asshole here? My husband played a fart prank on me at our wedding leaving me absolutely humiliated. How do I recover from this? I knew it was coming. Yes, I had been hounding him to propose to me after six years of being together, and it looked like we were finally going to take a step forward in our relationship until our wedding day, and I haven't since stopped being upset and crying my eyes out. The day I was supposed to feel the most beautiful, I may have looked like a disgusting pig. After the wedding vows were done, we were escorted at the stage where there was a love seat. My husband asked me to sit first, and as I did, I heard a ripping sound of a fart, followed by howls of laughter with him teasing me. It was a prank. There was a fart machine that was loud enough for everyone to hear. At first I was in shock, then in denial, and was completely stunned with tears that I was trying to hold back. The event ended soon after with reception scheduled for tomorrow night. I invested so much, emotionally and materially, into making our wedding perfect, as my husband decided to give me the lead on things as he's not a great planner. The perfect dress, the perfect makeup, venue, flowers, etc., only for me to be mocked at and humiliated. My self-esteem doesn't even exist, let alone fall. I am currently at my own apartment and have refused to speak to my husband, and I'm contemplating an annulment. He says it was just a prank, and he's been begging me to come back. He also said he would make it up to me and help me get over it. In the slight chance that it is, can someone convince me otherwise? We have way too much history together. My boyfriend gives me horrible gifts and I'm fed up. We've been together since 2019. Our first Christmas together, I got him an Alexa with the accessories to make his apartment a smart home. He moved into an apartment around his birthday, so I got him a microwave, toaster, silverware, etc. His most recent birthday, I got him an at-home golf set because he recently became obsessed with golf 
It cost more than expected, but I was happy to give it to him. Our first Christmas together, he gave me a video game and the money he owed me. For my birthday, he got me another video game. My birthday and Christmas is coming up, same day. I bought him a signed Steelers football because that's his favorite NFL team. He just told me the gift he got me, and this might be dramatic, but I had to stop myself from crying. He went on a solo vacation earlier this year, and my birthday present is that he printed the pictures from his vacation and put it into a photo book. This is his gift to everyone, his mom, sister, brother, friends, and me. He mentioned it before and I politely told him I did not want that gift. I actually told him I would hate it and he laughed it off. I've been telling him since we started dating that I like jewelry and I would love that as a gift. He tells me he hates going into jewelry stores and more recently, a couple days ago, he said, you already have so much jewelry, why would I buy you more? At this point, it feels disrespectful, and after finding out my gift today, I told him to just not give me anything. It literally feels like he doesn't care about me or my feelings. He calls me materialistic because I like to buy myself things, and I feel like if I were to tell him how I truly feel, he'll just call me materialistic some more. Am I the asshole for refusing my parents their grandchildren because they killed my cat? I, 26 female, moved to a new state about a year ago to live with my husband, 24 male. When we were moving me down, I had a cat named Kylo, cutest little tuxedo cat with a personality to follow. I had to house Kylo with my parents until my husband and I could afford to bring him home. I had a few cats pass away from being outdoor cats. Shy from a hit and run, Ashley from a nasty neighbor poisoning her, and Pumpkin running away. Pumpkin. When I dropped Kylo off to my parents, I explicitly told them to keep Kylo inside and that he was strictly an indoor cat. They agreed when I initially dropped them off, but after moving down, I'd get messages saying, Oh, but he's curious. He just wants to see. Side note, my parents own three dogs and keep the back door open full time. I constantly told them, No, Kylo is an indoor cat. Keep him inside. I begged and begged them to respect my decision with my cat and I had thought they had. I had received a phone call from my father saying that Kylo was hit by a car and killed today, September 17, 2023. What the fuck? In the midst of sobbing and yelling at my dad, I told you to keep him inside. My dad said, oh stop, it's just a cat. I promptly hung up on him and immediately called my best friend, 26 female. After a good cry and a stern talking, my husband and I decided to keep my parents from watching their grandchildren without us there, no matter the circumstances. If they can't respect my one wish with my cat, what's to say they will respect my wishes with my children? So, am I the asshole for not allowing my parents to, the chance to babysit their grandchildren? Am I the asshole for telling my in-laws that if they want a grandchild, they should give my wife her inheritance now? Basically, my in-laws want their only child, my wife Diana, to start pumping out grandchildren. Diana is 28 and just finishing her PhD. Then she wants to get established in a career before we start a family. My in-laws know how much money I make and they know we could live comfortably off my earnings. That isn't what Diana wants. She has worked her ass off to get where she is and she wants to reap the rewards of her hard work. She also says that once she is working that I could cut back my hours. I'm a welder and relax a little bit. I have been working since I was 15, so literally half my life. I make a very good living in return for a lot of fairly hard work. I have supported Diana in her education. She will graduate without student loans. We have a house, she has a good car, we have a good life. We want a few more years alone before we start our family. Over Christmas, the in-laws just wouldn't drop it. I finally snapped. I said that if they wanted grandchildren, then they can reimburse us for her education. They could further pay her salary she would be giving up. When she returned to work, they could pay her the difference between what she could be earning and her entry-level position. They could pay for a nanny too so my wife could work. Or they could back off and wait for us to be ready. They said that they couldn't afford all of that. I asked them how they expected us to afford it. I said that if it was really what they wanted, they could just give her the inheritance that would be coming her way now instead of later. They all got offended and said that it's not hers until they don't need it anymore. Diana asked me to drop it. She has tried dozens of times to explain to her parents why we are waiting. They just ignore her. They ignore what we want for our lives. They have been very cold since Christmas. They seem to think that I was a rude asshole for pointing out the costs of what they are asking for. A lot of her family agree with them and I went too far in asking them to pay if they want a grandchild now instead of later. Am I the asshole? 
Yeah, kind of. <laughs> like, it seems like he went above and beyond of just explaining the logistics. It seems like he was an asshole when he explained it. Mm-hmm. I'm an asshole for not allowing my parents to sleep in the same bed. I think you know where this is going, but there's no definitive answer on who's in the wrong. Also, for simplicity's sake, I'll be saying my parents, but it is my mother and my stepfather. My mother and stepdad have been together since I was little. So I'm a 25-year-old woman with two older siblings, both male. When we were growing up, we were never allowed girlfriends or boyfriends to spend the night, which I felt was fair enough. When my brother got to about 16, however, their girlfriends were allowed to spend nights, but they had to sleep in the spare room. Again, fair. That makes sense to me. I was always somewhat of a tomboy, so as you can imagine, teen boys didn't show much interest in me romantically, so I didn't get my first boyfriend until I was already 18. My parents wouldn't allow him to spend the night at all despite us being over 18. I wouldn't have mind if my brothers had been held to the same standard, but I felt as if they were favored over me. It isn't even because they disliked my boyfriend at that time either. Everyone seemed to love him. That relationship didn't last more than six-ish months, so I dropped it after a while. I got with my now fiancé when I was 22, and we've been engaged for a year. We're getting married in only a few months. Still, just like every time before, my parents wouldn't allow him to spend the nights until a few months after we got engaged, after I brought it up to them. It wasn't a conflict, but they knew I was irritated and allowed him to start using the spare bedroom. We moved in together not long after, so it, it didn't really matter. Now, I may be an asshole. My mother asked about wedding planning the first time she even contacted me since the move, and I told her I still had a lot to sort out, but I was getting through it, and she practically insisted on coming up to me and having a week of mother-daughter bonding time, where she could help me with wedding planning. My fiancé isn't a very social person and is happy to be the money bags behind the wedding decisions, (laughs) hee hee. He just likes to give his little opinions and I'm sure to include them when he does. My parents arrived and we spent the first day going out to dinner. I'd like to point out that the two aren't married and are steadfast that they won't be getting married again. Both of them divorced already, my stepdad twice. So as the night was slowing down... They asked me to show them to their room. I directed my mother to one guest room and my stepfather to another. We have a three-bedroom with no kids, yet we have the space. My mother said that there was plenty of room in one for them both and instructed my my stepdad to come in with her. I explained that, just like she told me, it was my house and I didn't want them sharing the bed in my house. I basically repeated word for word what she would tell me when I'd complain about my brothers getting better treatment than me when it came to their partner. I told her that actually they were in the same position I was in because neither of us were married. She tried saying it was different because they had been together for almost 20 years. I told them that it didn't matter because this is my house and my decision is final. Just like how my mother would shut any decisions about it back then. I was sure to mention how my brothers were allowed their partners and I wasn't, but she claimed I was making it up. They stayed the night and left for home the next day, which I preferred because I was happy wedding planning on my own, and I haven't heard from them since. My grandmother has called me to tell me off for it, though, so I'm wondering if I'm in the wrong. Am I the asshole? (laughs) Yeah, you are the asshole, but are you in the wrong? I don't think so. (laughs) I fully agree. I do think she is a bit of an asshole. Am I the asshole for not inviting my sister to my wedding because she didn't invite me to hers? I, 24 female, am getting married in a few weeks. Seven years ago, my sister got married and I was so excited. I talked to her about the wedding, what dress I'll be wearing, and if I could help her plan it as she was always dismissive and a few weeks before the wedding she told me that it would be 18 plus she said she wanted to exclude annoying kids and made this rule as she can't make exceptions and all this crap she also said i was too young for the adult atmosphere and whatever my 18th birthday was a week after the wedding i was devastated and i begged my sister to let me come i really wanted to be there to support her my stepmom refused to go to the wedding as a result of that and my dad almost divorced her over that amongst other things i eventually accepted it and told my sister that i would not invite her to my wedding she scoffed and laughed and said i was being immature and i'll forget about it my fiance's dad owns a massive yacht company they rent out yachts make repairs and sell equipment the wedding party will take place on a yacht which can accommodate 200 guests damn she asked me about the wedding and i flat out told her she wasn't invited She said I was being petty and how hurtful I was and that her reasons were justified and it's in the past. To be honest, I feel she just wants to be on the yacht and not so much support me. 
I told her that she should have thought about that back then and now she understands how I feel and that she's only jealous that my wedding will be better than hers. My dad called me and said I need to stop being petty and invite her and other family agree. I told them no and after some arguing they respected it. My sister is being a bitch about it on Facebook. Edit, a friend suggested I should make my sister delete all the Facebook posts and write an apology letter saying why it was wrong to exclude me from the wedding. I think that's cringe, but what do you all think? Karma. I love <laughs> karma. Yes, exactly. I'm refusing to talk to my father and spoiled sister who wants to walk down the aisle with me in white. Growing up, my sister, 29 female, and I never seemed to get along. It was always a competition with her, and she found a way to have it all her way all the time. Mostly because I was a pushover and my parents were always so busy, they just assumed I didn't mind. Once a boy she liked asked me out, and because I knew she liked him, I turned him down. I even offered to introduce him to my sister. I understood that she would be a little upset, but instead, she went around our school and family and friends talking about how I threw myself onto the guy that she likes and what a whore I was. When I graduated high school, I got into a pretty good college on half a scholarship. I posted about it on my Instagram and I even got treated to a pretty good dinner by my cousins. All this while she was still living with us and attended a community college after my parents' persistence. When she found out about the post and the dinner, she went crying to my dad, who's always favored her over me. He took her side and threatened to not pay for my college for flexing and being ungrateful. That's fucking terrible. You are not wrong for not wanting to talk to your dad or your sister because that is fucking disgusting. I can only imagine how worse it has gotten. I mean, I don't have to imagine. He wants your sister to walk down the aisle with you like, oh, baby girl, I am so sorry. There would also be times where he would buy her whatever she wanted for her birthday, like a new phone or diamond jewelry. But if my mom or relatives bought me anything for my birthday, he would make a face and mumble to himself about how much money I waste. For my 16th birthday, my mom bought me a diamond necklace with my name on it. My sister acted like she dropped it when I was away and damaged it by messing up the lock. We tried to return it and getting it fixed, but after they quoted my mom a really high amount to get it repaired, my dad somehow forced my mom to just exchange the necklace into money for family reasons, which was really just to throw my sister a bigger 17th birthday party. He didn't even throw me one for my 16th birthday. His reason? You need to focus on your exams. Oh, hell no. Nah. My question is, are we sure that your dad is your dad? I mean, I know that people pick favorite children out of their biological children all the time, but... Has this ever been a conversation? Like, are we sure your daddy is your daddy? Many years later, I moved out. I took out a student loan and got a job. My 28 female's fiance, 29 male, were getting married in May. I love him a lot. I recently, recently arranged a girl's trip to Vegas for my bachelorette party with all my girls. When I told my parents about this plan, which is what you shouldn't have did, which is what you shouldn't have did, when I told my parents about this plan, my dad insisted I let my sister come with me too because a marriage in the family is a family event. No, it ain't. A marriage in the family is a whoever the fuck I want to be there event. Just because we family don't mean you're automatically entitled and you're on the list. Bitch, no, because my wedding guest list gonna be five motherfucking people long. Hell no. Nah. My sister had already booked tickets without even asking me if she could join us, which I found extremely annoying because I felt like I had my hand forced into allowing her to come. After talking to my fiance about it, I decided I would let her come on the trip because she's been spamming my phone, practically begging me to allow her to come. On that trip, we were gonna go pick up my wedding dress and dresses for the bridesmaids. During the shopping, she was acting very rude and constantly commenting on the body shapes of other bridesmaids and making comments on how certain types of dresses wouldn't look nice on them. She also picked the most cleavage showing dresses that I wasn't very comfortable with on my wedding. A few days after shopping, I found out from the store manager that we had two white dresses to be tailored. I was confused. I asked her what she meant and she told me that one dress was the one that I picked out and the other was a short lace mini white dress. Hell no. Nah immediately would have just been like, you can go ahead and stop all the tailoring for that, all of that. I called up my maid of honor, my best friend. She tells me that she saw my sister checking out white dresses at the store. I called her up and asked her if it was hers. 
My dad joined the call and said it was only fair if she also got to walk down the aisle in white because she was getting older. Well, that's that old bitch's problem. That's her motherfucking problem, bitch. If you want to get walked down the aisle in white, have your daddy put on a fake ass wedding for you since you want to get the motherfucking attention so damn bad because you're not going to steal the spotlight from me on my wedding day. The way these motherfuckers would cease to exist to me. My dad said it was only fair if she was also walked down the aisle in white because she was getting older and is still single and may not have the experience of doing it in her 20s. And as a good sister, it's only fair for me to want to do this with her as it shows our close sisterly bond. There is no sisterly bond. Your sister's a bitch. She's made your life miserable. No, hell, hell no. Nah. Your sister and your dad are delusional as fuck. They truly feel like they're going to be able to force you to do what the fuck you want them, what they want you to do. Do not allow this to happen. Do not allow this. Do you need donations for security at your wedding to keep your punk ass daddy and your sister away? Girl, let me know. Let me know. I will personally donate to this situation. I will come. Let me be the door monitor at this motherfucking wedding. I bet you they won't make it in. I told my bridesmaids and fiance about this and they were all shocked at my father's behavior. My mom has been pretty quiet about the whole situation, but was also upset with my dad. I informed some of my cousins and they all tried to talk to my dad about how that's a bad idea. He said that he won't let us do it at our decided venue. We're doing it at our family vacation home in another state to keep costs low if we don't let her walk. Fuck it. Fuck it. Who has a backyard? Let's go find a park. Do you know you can go to your city's um, uh, office in your city and rent a couple of hours at a park? We, I do it here for birthday parties all the fucking time. Do you let me know? I will do the research my fucking self because fuck that. Oh, well. Oh, fucking well. I never had big parties or celebrations. It was always my spoiled sister who had the big parties and gifts. I picked my family vacation house because it was my late grandmother's house and my dad now owns it. My family and friends are offering to help us cover the cost of finding a bigger, nicer venue. But my mom is asking me to work it out with my father and sister who are refusing to talk to me because I'm being an egotistic bride. Are you fucking kidding me? I am the bride. I am the bride. Not you. Not you being mad at me that I don't want you walking down the aisle with me at my wedding. Call me whatever the fuck you want. I will be that, but I'm still the fucking bride at the end of the day. If I say fucking no, it's not going to happen. When I heard that, I got really angry and I yelled at my dad for all his shortcomings as a father in my life and I blocked both of them. His side of the family has been calling me nonstop to calm down and to talk to them as well. Am I overreacting? Should I just talk it out and convince her to pick another dress? What the fuck? No, you are absolutely not overreacting. This is fucking crazy. This is insane for them to be pushing so hard on somebody else being a part of your wedding simply because they aren't experiencing it in their 20s. So fucking what? So fucking what? You already know that this is just your sister trying to steal your shine. Keep stick to this. Die on this fucking hill. They cannot come if they're not going to act fucking right. If your daddy ain't gonna pull his head out of his ass, he can't fucking come. It, your sister just can't fucking come because even if she do come, she needs a personal bodyguard that's gonna beat the fuck out of her the moment she try to stand up, open her mouth, try to serve herself some food, show up wearing some shit we don't like. We need someone that is dedicated to watching this bitch like a hawk. Like she can't fucking come. Hell no. You are absolutely not overreacting for this at all. They are acting as if they're entitled for her to be a part of your fucking wedding and that is not at all true. No. Update. I sent the link to this post to my family group chat with all of my distant relatives too. They all saw it and read it. I got a lot of support from my mom's side and my dad's side just stopped calling me and they're quiet. I think the whole family is just really upset with my sister and my father right now. My mom has also moved in with her sister after my aunt scolded her for not standing up for me. Period. I am so glad. I'm so fucking glad. I've called my dad and my sister with my fiance and I explained that they're not invited to my wedding and they'll never get to be a part of my new married life, know my future children or see them grow up. They've lost me as family. The lady at the bridal store canceled my sister's order for free after I told her about the situation. I put a password on the order, the order that only I know could ship. I'm having a small courthouse wedding and using all the extra money to for a grand honeymoon. We're traveling to Europe since my fiance and I love traveling and we met that way too. 
Thank you so much for your support, suggestions, and advice. It means so much to me. The OP made a couple of edits, and the first one is that her maid of honor is related to her sister's ex-boyfriend, and that the sister showed up wearing white to the ex-boyfriend's wedding, so she doesn't even feel like this is a grudge. She just feels like her sister is an attention whore, and I agree with her. She also says that when she was younger, they were in a really strange financial situation, and money was kind of tight, and her parents planned for her sister, but they didn't plan for her. So she kind of feels like she's the reason like they struggled when she was younger and her dad blames her for that.